Eight leading by nine. John Starks, 32 years old, in the worst shooting slump of his career. Last four months, the numbers continue to go down, really struggling right down to April. Starks trying to find his game. One of the reasons Starks has had his problems were off the court. He's got a grandmother who has cancer back in Oklahoma, grandmother who raised him, somebody who's very important to Starks. She's been seriously ill. Starks in daily contact as he fires the three. He knocks it down. He tried not to use it as an excuse, said it has nothing to do with his play, but he's in a very emotional person, Matt, and it certainly has had an effect on him. And John, like all outside shooter, has to really work hard to keep that stroke refined, and it takes a lot of work in the practice gym before games, sometimes maybe two, three hundred jumpers a day to feel good about. Sometimes John slackens off a little bit when he gets tired, and I think that was part of his problem late in the season. Two on the shot clock. Leonard for three. The shot Leonard in and out. Oakley grabs the board. Leonard's the game's leading scorer. He's got nine already. Chris Childs making his move. Somebody left him wide open. Childs, another player who needs to look for his offense for the Knicks. Well, there's that early transition look for the Knicks with Charles Oakley on a drag out high, setting that little bump to open up the lane for Chris Childs. The Knicks want to keep attacking early, so once again, they don't have to go and work half-court offense against Miami. Morning call for the loose ball foul. His quick move did not result to the basket. Morning picks up his first. Well, all four of his fouls in game one were very ticky-tack. And this one here, really no chance to get the offensive rebound, just an unnecessary shove. And Pat Riley trying to send a message to Alonzo after game one and yesterday at practice. You really have to concentrate, keep yourself out of foul trouble in this first half. Morning said the officials actually told him some of the fouls were a bit on the cheap side. His relationship with the officials is much, much better. He's really done a good job of proving that. Four on the shot clock and a three-second violation called against Larry Johnson. Turnovers in the first game on Friday night. Knicks had 15, the Heat with only eight. Jeff Van Gundy was hoping to get more turnovers because, let's face it, the Knicks not an offensive juggernaut. They need some easy buckets. Tim Hardaway has been very quiet in this first quarter. Just one for two from the field. Does have four assists, looking to get his teammates more involved. Leonard, the three. Rashad Leonard from downtown. 12 points for Leonard. His second three-pointer of the Heat back up by seven. And the incredulous look on the face of Jeff Van Gundy. He cannot understand why Bashan Leonard has been getting open time and time again. Alan Yusuf misfires on the three. Hardaway from downtown. Johnson whacks it off. Houston pushing off Leonard to get that one. Half the crowd had that call. <laughs> Poor pass from Houston trying to go behind the back. Morning picking it off. Fourth Nick turnover. Hardaway lost it. Oakley helping out on defense. Houston makes his move. Draws the foul. Askins picks up his second. And Alan Houston will go to the free throw. And he averaged during the regular season series against the Heat nine free throws a game. That's kind of a number Jeff Van Gundy hopes he gets today. Well, this is really the best bet for Allen Houston in transition in the open floor, especially, especially against Keith Askins. Really, Houston doesn't need a pick. He's better off going one-on-one -on -one against Askins, who often will overreact defensively and lean forward. And how about this? Dan Marley back on the floor. Hurt you and all. I want to confront the person who lied to Paul Sunderland. How can you lie to Paul Sunderland? <laughs> So, we were told that Marley would not return, but Thunder Dan showing his toughness. As you see, Terry Cummings making his first appearance. Cummings did not play at all in game one. Oakley will get a break. Marley is, in terms of toughness, something special as Chris Childs arguing the call. Joey Crawford keeping it tight on Childs' defense on Hardaway, first on Childs. Well, the Knicks feel that Childs is their best pressure point guard. Charlie Ward does not do that good a job of it. Charlie, a better team defensive player. And Childs trying to keep that pressure on Hardaway, make him work as much as possible. Also with Charlie Ward, when John Starks plays Hardaway, they try to want to wear him down. And that's why Pat Riley will go to Eric Murdoch quite often with Hardaway to take some of that ball handling pressure off. He calls the Knicks guards pit bulls. <laughs> and Hardaway hits the first. Let's send it over now to Paul Sunderland. 
Well, I think everyone has noticed that Dan Marley is back in this basketball game. He was in the locker room. The doctors had come in to see him, and as I reported a few moments ago, would not return. Well, so much for that. He came out of the locker room. His wife and children were waiting outside to see what was going on. He brushed right past them and said, hey, look, go tell Pat Riley I'm going to give it a go. So he's going to get back out there on Allen Houston. So much for Dan Marley. He is the man. Back to you. And he's right up on Houston again. Child's left open and an offensive foul. Nick setting screens down low, a little too hard. John Starks picking up his first. Starks, like old times, raising his hand when called for the foul. Well, John's happy. His first jump shot went down, which means there's more to come. He leading by six. Hardaway tripped up. Childs fell down. That's just a matter of wrong place, wrong time. And Childs picks up his second, so Childs and Ward are point guards each with two. You know, as a coach, you tell your defensive point guards, keep Tim Hardaway from getting in the lane. Don't let him penetrate. Ha! <laughs> a lot easier said than done. That's a smart play from Hardaway, seeing Childs on the floor, and he knows he's going to get a foul or an easy two, taking advantage of Childs' poor positioning. And there, Hardaway, game seven, had that 38-point game in the clincher, had the big game in game two, and then, of course, terrific on Friday night as well. 24 of those 34 in the first half. Jeff Van Gundy sarcastically said yesterday, hey, we're doing a much better job. He's going from 38 to 34. Maybe we can get him down to 30. Maybe in about 10 or 12 games, we'll get him under 20. He's got five points so far here in the first quarter. A minute remaining opening period. Mashburn just in the game, guarding Larry Johnson. Johnson the spin move and one Larry Johnson with a chance for a three-point play Johnson with a primal scream as he walks to the free throw line Mashburn his first foul a smart play by the Knicks to go right away inside against Jamal Mashburn not a particularly good defensive player no way he can do any business down inside against Larry Johnson and one of the reasons why Pat Riley keeping Mashburn out of the starting lineup despite all the games he missed he did start the last regular season game and he said Jamal Mashburn's disposition defensively is not right so hard to come back after being out of action to be thrust into it Mashburn a very versatile player see Eric Murdoch is in now for Hardaway Murdoch sensational in game one Leonard on the drive. Four on the shot clock. Houston. Ball for the foul. Hit him on the head. Got a ball and the foul. And a technical foul call on Allen Houston. And his teammates quickly usher him away. Allen Houston who did not have a technical foul call in the entire regular season, gets one right here. A little frustration, too. Allen Houston just one for four from the field. Probably feels he's getting bumped and banged and bruised at the other end of the floor, but a little loss of composure and poise there. He had Dan Marley in bad sorts right there, had him leaning in to force up a shot and then to try to block it from behind. Second personal on Houston. Marley missing the first. Of course, two technicals, automatic ejection, and players who pick up the first, you have to be careful because you can involve in a little fracas, and it's one of those double technicals. You're out of there. Now, Mike, this is the first time in Allen Houston's career that he's asked to not only be the go-to guy, but also get other players involved. In Detroit, he played off Grand Hill, and of course, last year, playing off Patrick Ewing. Big difference. Murdoch doing a good job on Childs. Johnson against Mashburn once again. Johnson flips it up with the right hand. Terry Cummings, Murdoch goes down hard. Cummings and Murdoch got entangled. Shot clock is turned off, final seconds here of the first quarter. Mashburn, beautiful feed down low, and Morning laying it in. A 10-point lead for the Heat. Child's not aware, and does not even get a shot off from the